I thought in this episode I would introduce Telstar. Now Telstar is a modern view data service that that's kind of based on the, the ideas around Prestel during the 70s, 80s and 90s. And I guess if you're watching this video then you're already familiar with Prestel. Telstar is most easily accessed from a home computer of some sort using uh, an internet modem and we can and give that a go, it's very simple to do. But I thought it might be more interesting to take that a stage further and have a look at how we might dial up the system with an old modem, something like that. And then maybe we could look at um, some Prestel type terminals that were around in the 80s and see how we can use these to connect to Telstar as well. Well, I thought we could start using a Wi-Fi modem. This is probably one of the simplest ways to connect to Telstar and other BBS type systems. Um, this is a Y modem 232 mounted in a box. Um, these are readily available and there are lots of different things out there on the market. So for terminal software, I'll use the BBC computer in this instance and we'll use Comstar. Okay, so Comstar has a Presto mode. And one of the things we need to do is make sure that we're not using a split board rate as it's not supported by this particular motor. And while we're here we can set the terminal's weight bits no parity. Looking at the modem's internal directory I can see that the main Telstar system is entry number 2. And we can use this to make a connection to Telstar. Now it's running at 1200 baud, we've set our modem to that, but even if we hadn't set our modem to, to that, if we'd set a higher speed, it still runs at 1200 baud. Telstar's designed really to kind of emulate how, how it would have been in the day and to give you that exciting experience. Okay, so we can see we have plenty of stuff to, to look at and play around with. And we'll, we'll do um, a closing sequence that's got um, a few pages from Telstar just to encourage you to have a go at it. Um, I suppose one thing worth work, look, looking at is something like the news. We can see up-to-date news and weather, so if we were to go on with The Guardian, for example, um, and have a little look at uh, the UK news. And knowing how obsessed we Brits are about the weather, it's only right that we go and check that out as well. So if we were to have a look at um, uh, uh, somewhere like Skipton, which is where I'm located at the moment. We can see that it's drizzling outside. Well, I knew that because it's bashing on the window now. Um, but at least we know it works. And we can get a few hours forecasts and all the rest of it. So there's a couple of things to note really with Telstar and, and view, proper view data services and that is that it's quite slow to render a page and the, the weather is an example of that. Uh, you're waiting a whole second or so to see a map if only to have to press return key. Well if we go back to the main index you, you can see um, you probably have a better view what's going on. So if we wanted to if this was being displayed and we want to interrupt it we can just go straight to the news and if we knew it was actually the BBC we want we can press a one and if it was actually uh, world news, we can just hit one straight away. So if you knew, know the, the sequence of numbers, you can just type them in. Uh, and Prestel came up with the Prestel directory. This is a Prestel directory from 1981, um, which is in the early days of Prestel. And you can see that there are, there are many uh, information providers providing pages for people to view uh, on Prestel. So it might seem a slow system running at 1200 board, but actually the navigation of it made it, if you knew where you were going, it could be quite quick. Now bear in mind that this was introduced in 79 and was popular uh, in, for various categories of people, businesses early on, and I'm talking about Prestel now, of course, not Telstar. Um, and, and later on when the home commun computer market um, sort of developed, then um, things like Prestel and review day services such as that, Micronet and others um, became more popular. And it's probably worth bearing in mind that the internet was not really available to the general public in the UK and the World Wide Web was not invented until 1989. Okay, so let's give it a whirl with the Prestel adapter. So first we use the Acorn Prestel software. And that's pretty much the setup. We'll give the, the phone number a call. 
The Prestel adapter uses pull styling, which is quite a slow way to connect to Prestel, or in this case Telstar, and I've speeded it up for the purposes of the video. Even so, it's a fairly efficient way to check on your financial position, especially in the early 1980s. OK, so we've connected to Prestel using the Acorn Prestel adapter and the Acorn Prestel software. We go back to the main index. Um, Telstar includes a gateway system, a gateway service page. So we'll have a little look at that. Um, this will allow us to connect to other systems. Um, so we're still dialed up, still using the telephone network. But we can have a little look at um, something like Nextel. So Nextel is a view data service specifically designed for owners of the ZX Spectrum Next. And the intention is that you'll be able to download tele software and things for that, for that computer. There are other gateways too. So for example, the uh, tetrachloromethane, the, probably the oldest view data service in the world, uh, can be accessed as well through Telstar. In addition to that, we've got a, a live stream of uh, TFAX, the Teletext service. You can even play Castle Cave Adventure. The BBC computer we've been using has its own serial port and it has the Teletext graphics chip within it. So it makes it very easy to connect a modem and use it for view data services. Now, if you're a Sinclair Spectrum owner, you need something like this, which is a Prism VTX 5000. There are other products that do similar things, and it includes all the software you need, as well as the modem as well. Well, we've got it set up, so let's give it a go. Okay, so we'll choose to log on. We'll do a manual log on. It's asking for an ID. And the trick here is to put 10 asterisks in. And now we have to phone the computer. So once you've dialed the phone number and made the connection, we can see a bit of noise from the modem negotiation phase, but eventually we connect, the screen is cleared, and we see the opening page for Telstar. Now from this point on, everything is exactly the same as we've seen before. Fortunately, the capture is not too good quality-wise, but at least you can see it all works. I think the next stage might be to just make a connection using a 10 data terminal. This is the keyboard half of a TD1404, it comes in two parts. So this is like a remote control. It has a small 9 volt battery in the back and it's very easy to use. I bought this particular 10 data terminal on eBay for about £25. Um, and whilst it didn't work when I first got it, I've changed a couple of the memory chips inside and, and it works now, at least to a fashion. There are still a couple of faults on it, the battery needs replacing, and there's a garbled screen, as you can see from this shot. Um, however, if I program the number in each time I switch it on, I can get it to connect to Telstar, and eventually I'll get around to repairing it properly. Once again, the capture is not too great, but at least you can see that it's working. Well, I hope that's been a reasonably pleasant introduction to Telstar. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to press the thumbs up button or subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comments section. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.